Hi everybody, welcome back to Nasibyanka, the channel where I talk about Bulgarian history, culture, tradition and faith. Well, okay, I started talking, I started introducing ecumenism. I might as well take that route for a while. And I'm thinking about creating uh, a series. So it's just going to say episode certain number and then part one, two, three, four, five. And I suspect that I'll end up with many parts. In particular, I'm going to be translating on the go the book by Archman Wright Serafim Alexiev. I'm very thankful that uh, there was somebody recently who commented and provided wonderful resources uh, under the comment section uh, under one of my videos. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. And uh, I was amazed, pleasantly surprised to hear that, you know, people who also know English might have heard of Serafim Alexiev. Just like a few years ago, I was super surprised to see that. Um, I forget, it might have been Amazon, but somewhere I found a very small, thin book by Serafim Alexiev um, with regards to his poems being translated. Um, so whoever has taken that effort, wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I looked for the book Orthodoxy and Ecumenism, again by Archman Wright Serafim Alexiev, uh, in the English language, and all I could find was one book and a couple of sources. It said that it was available via Google Play and uh, an unknown store. I'm not even sure if it's a store. Um, it was available, if I'm not mistaken, for $35, something like that. Um, if you can obtain that copy, if you're interested, that would be it. I have not read it. I don't know what the translation is like, but I'm excited that somebody has, again, put the effort and made it available in the English language. Up until a few years ago, it wasn't available. Now, common as Amazon is, <laughs> and I think many of us are shopping at Amazon nowadays, it's also convenient. Uh, it only offers one other copy, and it is on The Forgotten Medicine by Archman Wright Serafim Alexiev. Um, I read this one over 10 years ago, probably. Um, a friend of mine offered it, actually at the OCA, where I used to go at the time. And uh, yes, it is a very good book as well. It's a very thin book. Uh, by comparison, the current one that I want to share with you guys is like over 200 pages. <laughs> and. Uh, I have a PDF file of it uh, in the Bulgarian language. I have it in its original form. I also have uh, uh, the resource available in, well, several resources available in the Bulgarian language. Uh, and they actually are made open to the public and they are disclosing um, the encouragement to share that with the public, which I'm, again, very thankful for. The question remains, why do you all think that uh, this kind of information is not translated and made easily accessible to people in the West. Goes beyond me. I have many theories, but hey, I'm gonna leave that to you to speculate on. Uh, one more thing I wanted to also mention is I looked back through some of my most recent videos that I had posted. Um, they I made them over the past few days this last week of October, and I <laughs> noticed how tired I was. It was a busy time for me. I was busy and uh, I didn't have much sleep. And uh, I know that translation takes a long, a long time. Um, I love it. It's something that um, I thrive on, but it definitely takes energy <laughs> as well. So um, I kind of brought some giggles for me, but uh, thank you all for your patience and encouragement as well, because uh, in retrospect, I was kind of thinking, wow, that's kind of pathetic how tired I was in some of those videos, but at least the information goes out. So it is what it is. Some days uh, my energy is less and other days I have more of the capacity. Last night, for example, I stayed up past midnight translating the um, introductory notes and the introduction from this book. Uh, so what I thought was, um, of course, the copy that's available by somebody who's translated uh, Orthodoxy and Ecumenism um, is out there. You guys can afford it, go for it. Uh, but if it's difficult to obtain, uh, because again, I have not purchased that copy and I have not read it. I've read, I have the one in Bulgarian language. 
So uh, my intention is to respect, you know, that copy's uh, uh, copyright and in the same token to offer you my version of the translation from the Bulgarian language, which again is encouraging us to share it freely and publicly because we are living in those times when um, the truth is the only variable, the only thing that does set us free and it's not, if it's not made available to people, who are we kidding? <laughs> Um, but it is always good to have a hard copy within yourself. I mean, if you have that copy, you can share it with other people. You can always make a reference in it. So the more, the better, I think. Um, if YouTube can communicate some of that information, great, so be it. And uh, if, uh, if you can obtain that copy in an accessible, easy manner, awesome, that's great. Um, I hope that this information may be spread. So in this video here, I am just going to uh, introduce you to who on earth Archimandrite uh, Serafim Alexiev was. Who is he? I mean, I say was because he passed away uh, into the Lord uh, in the year of 1993. So very recently. He is Bulgarian uh, and he continues to live, as we Orthodox know, uh, in the, you know, life after this earthly life. So that's why I say is. Um, so before I begin to share with you his book on orthodoxy and ecumenism and the follow-up parts of this episode, uh, I thought that you guys should know who he is. So, okay. Uh, Archimand writes Serafim Alexiev. He was born in 1912 and he uh, reposed in the Lord in the year of 1993. Uh, he's a much, much loved Bulgarian priest. Bulgarians talk about him. Most, uh, if not all of our Orthodox Christian resources, online, books, uh, bookstores, um, news, they talk and abound in information about him. We're quoting him, we're referring to him. Both the uh, Bulgarian Orthodox Christian Church and her uh, churches that are following the new calendar, a few are following the old calendar, but also the old calendarists. Now, pause. There is an old calendar, Bulgarian church, that is also uh, preserving the Orthodox Christian tradition, and that's under uh, Vladika Foti. I will mention him uh, in the future um, a little more in depth. I just recently mentioned him in a uh, comment since uh, there were some questions about um, ecumenism and the churches in the USA. Um, so I have a lot of respect for them as well. Uh, there is a lot to say on how they actually, what they did is accurate <laughs> canonically. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far, uh, let's not jump into conclusions and let's just explore. My hope for you guys is that you may understand orthodoxy in its essence because, again, the truth shall set you free. What that means is if you are educated, if you are correctly informed, then you will, you will make your own choices and those will be the right choices where you need to be. Right? They, but your choices, your decisions must be based on a fully informed um, basis choice. So uh, Archimandrite Serafim Alexiev was a theologian, a spiritual writer, a poet, who left behind an extremely rich, abundant and inspirational uh, spiritual and scientific heritage. He was born in Gornu Brodi Sersku. That was uh, one of Bulgaria's Macedonian regions. Remember there is a Macedonian region I've talked about and I will again talk about in the future. Uh, but Macedonia was Bulgaria. It is Bulgaria. Macedonia was ruptured from Bulgaria uh, by means of corruption, political corruption. So that's why um, it's a big issue nowadays. Um, it was basically ripped off uh, by lies, means of lies, and um, governmental corruption on behalf of the um, other European forces and the Macedonian government that formed the Macedonian government. But bear with me here. So far, um, all we need to know here for this moment is that uh, Archimandrite Serafim Alexiev was born in uh, Macedonian uh, territory of Bulgaria. He is Bulgarian. He was Bulgarian. His secular name was Stuyan Georgiev Alexiev. Uh, he studied at the Sofia Theological Seminary and also the old 
Catholic Faculty of Theological Seminary in Bern, Switzerland. He taught for decades at the Plovdiv and Sofia Theological Seminaries in Bulgaria. Between the years of 1960 and 1969, uh, also he taught at the Theological Academy of St. Clement of Ohrid uh, in Sofia, Bulgaria, where he was also an associate professor at the Department of Dogmatic Theology. Now, um, St. Clement of Ohrid is one of our dearest saints. I want to talk about him at some point in the future. Um, Ohrid, again, is a territory in Macedonia and Bulgaria. <laughs> that, that, that. So in the year of 1940, Archimand Wright Serafim Alexiev accepted monasticism. In 1943, he was ordained a higher monk. In 1947, he was in inducted into the Archimand Wright rank and there he took over the leadership of the cultural and educational department of the Holy Synod in Sofia, Bulgaria. In the year of 1969, Archimand Wright Serafim discontinued his teaching activity due to the disagreement concerning the calendar change, the calendar reform, and the membership of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church at the time in the World Council of the Churches, WCC. One of my recent episodes talked to you guys about how Bulgaria made, ultimately made the decision to end that membership. We were judged by many of the Western uh, denominations. <laughs> I should be careful here. By many of the Western Orthodox churches that participate in ecumenism, right? Uh, such as the OCA. Um, possibly the Greek or church that's under the Patriarch Bartholomew. Uh, but those who participate in ecumenism, I've heard some bitter comments about Bulgaria ending its membership in the World Council of the Churches. Nonetheless, if you bear through the my translation here, it's going to take some time, but I'm going to steadily and slowly move forward and do it for you guys, God willing. Uh, you will learn very... This is probably the best defense of orthodoxy that Archimand Wright Serafim Alexiev has offered so far um, against the heresy of ecumenism. So you will learn the details and the factual information, the proof of why ecumenism is wrong for us orthodox to participate in. So it is a great decision. I'm thankful that the Bulgarian Orthodox Church ended its membership in the WCC, in the World Council of the Churches. But at the time, clearly, it's this resource is saying, telling us that in 1969, Archimand Wright Serafim Alexiev had to actually move away from it because of what was going on. So you can see the Orthodox faith is a living faith. It's not some kind of black and white, rigid, you know, parameter to say like, we're the best and you guys are the evil ones. No, uh, our compass is always the dogmas of the church, the canons of the church, the tradition of the church. And if a local body is following, good, it's being aligned, stay there. But if it's not following those dogmas, it's time for us to move forward. And there is a canon, uh, uh, one rule of the um, canon rules in the, in, in the Orthodox um, tradition that actually allows this and actually blesses it. Um, and I will address it in the future. Okay, coming back to here. Uh, Serafim Alexiev then retired to the monastery, the protection of the Theotokos, uh, in Dragalevci district, uh, Knyazhevo, near Sofia, Bulgaria. It's just a neighborhood there. Uh, he remained for the rest of his life there, confirming his pastoral activity where he created many cherished works. Um, works that have not been published in the USA, wonder why. I suspect that's not by accident. <laughs> of course, that's my little inserted note here, reflection. Okay. Uh, on January the 13th, 1993, he reposed into the Lord. He gave his soul unto the Lord. Weeks after his repose, the canonical communion with the Bulgarian Orthodox Church was ceased. It was stopped, and the old calendar Bulgarian Church stood out, being led by Hiero monk Photius, uh, his name being Rosen Dimitrov uh, Surumakov, uh, up to this day. He was ordained in the year of 1993 as Bishop of the, hiero of the Hierarchs of the Old Calendar Churches of Greece and Romania. Um, 
Again, please note that the apostolic rule that I referred to earlier actually allows this to happen legalistically. Um, I will go some other time into the canon rules and the apostolic rules, but there is one that permits that. Uh, so I respect that uh, the old calendar church in Bulgaria under Photius very highly, absolutely. Uh, he has given a uh, very uh, cherished and valuable advice on how to humanely proceed towards our brothers and sisters who are being deceived currently, how not to condemn them, and uh, how to spread the truth in a loving, uh, truth-loving, honest, and gentle manner as well. Uh, Orthodox are not to be... Hmm, what do you guys say? Hmm. What do you say? like rugs to walk over. We're not to placate people. We're not to people, please. Our job is to stand up for the truth in a gentle and respectful manner. So from mental health perspective, that would be, you know, we don't want to be passive. We don't want to be aggressive, but we want to be assertive. That's the Orthodox spirit. Uh, and uh, Forti is different from uh, the other so-called old calendar churches, which I'm hearing there are many who have branched out but unfortunately, many of them have broken into heresies, um, not just in Bulgaria, but also in the USA and also in Romania and in Greece and in Serbia and other places. Um, so um, I just wanted to make a mark here. Um, he specifically, by the way, has verbalized not to condemn our brothers and sisters in the uh, Rokor, the Russian Orthodox uh, Christian Church outside of Russia. Um, and this is so far uh, one of the strongest places <clears throat> that still preserves the doctrine of orthodoxy in the USA. Um, more to follow on these things, but uh, you know, one must proceed with caution. And again, I really, my hope for you guys is not to feed you with problem resolution, but to give you the information so that you may think, pray upon it. <laughs> Uh, think through it critically and then make your own educated decisions. Okay, so among the books that Archimand Wright Serafim Alexiev wrote are Our Faith, and that's a form of a catechism book, Our Hope, which discusses the Beatitudes, Our Love, uh, it goes over the Ten Commandments, um, also brochures on spiritual uh, and moral themes such as Pride and Humility, enmity and reconciliation, the meaning of suffering, the self-styled judges, sick and healthy mystique, and the forgotten medicine. This is the only one thin, tiny booklet, kind of like a brochure or like tiny little thin book that is available in the USA. And I think that's ridiculous. I'm literally ir ironizing how difficult access to this brilliant Archimand Wright's writings, you know, has been made to people. It's not fair. That's uh, clearly um, the fruit of something rotten there. Um, so uh, he has written many more books, uh, such as Life After Life. This is one that, God willing, I'm hoping to translate for you guys in the future. There was a wonderful person that I got to know through, well, in, in personally, but online. He, had, he was Bulgarian Orthodox uh, Pet Kuchinov who uh, translated, uh, I'm sorry, uh, he uh, read uh, and kept audio material of Serafim Alexiev's books uh, in a Bulgarian file that's publicly available to everybody. It was wonderful uh, for me to be able to commute long distances while listening to his uh, very well narrated, read, uh, you know, and voiced um, books, which were, again, the books of Serafim Alexiev. That's how I got to know also a whole other bunch of the information that Serafim Alexiev had written in the Bulgarian language, though, that's not available again in English. Um, so Serafim Alexiev also wrote the Orthodox view of the old and new calendar that was uh, in the year of 1972. He wrote Our Prayer. He wrote and published The Prayer of Saint Ephraim the Syrian in the light of the patristic teaching. And he also wrote The Optina Elders and many, many, many other works. So. This is in a nutshell. Um, there is a lengthier autobiography of Serafim Alexiev, which for now I'm going to withhold just for the benefit of giving you some grasp of who he is. Um, one little detail that I will mention is that um, one of his spiritual children 
is a, a, a canonized saint, Saint Serafim Sobolev, and for what I know, he moved from Russia to Bulgaria. He so loved Bulgaria and uh, Serafim Alexiev that he also created a whole bunch of books. Uh, he's actually my husband's patron saint, and uh, we revere him very highly. We also have, again, his books. Serafim Sobolev is his name. He is Saint Serafim Sobolev, the Wonder Worker. Um, even though he had a Russian origin, he moved to Bulgaria, he chose to stay and live there for the rest of his life. For what I know, he produced his publishings uh, there. And again, he knew directly Serafim Alexiev, he was his spiritual child. Um, so all these things I'm yet to hear about, you know, in the West, um, but if I don't hear about them, I hope that you guys can hear about them from me and uh, begin to dig, research, explore, and let's popularize that so that people can have access to it. Because um, how else are we to really preserve and stand for our orthodox uh, truth if we don't, again, if we don't have the full uh, knowledge, the full information, the full understanding of that, of the faith. And the faith itself, orthodoxy, is the the fullness of the of the knowledge like christ has given us this is the fullness of the faith there is no other denomination that can give you the fullness of reality of truth okay i need to stop here <laughs> i'll talk a lot but um i have prepared uh already last night i translated the introduction to this book and it felt like it was a wonderful synopsis to uh, the heresy that ecumenism is from Artem and Reitz Rafim Alexiev's point of view. So um, stay tuned and I will make a video about this um, sometime soon. <laughs> I will try to disperse those and give you some time. I know that recently I have posted or at least made available several videos per week, some days per day. I just wanted to catch up and I thought to myself, you know, YouTube allows me to schedule them in a calendar manner so that they can be dispersed through time. Maybe like, you know, I can prepare 10 videos and I can still schedule them that you guys see them one at a time. But then again, do I really need to be doing that? If they're available, how they go? Make them available to the world. Um, I have heard from people say make them shorter. Some people say that they're okay the way they are. And so I try to make some videos shorter. Others come out to be longer. <laughs> Sometimes I can't help it. Sometimes I'm too tired to think about the length of the video, honestly. But uh, that's okay. I also think that, hey, there is that option with the internet. You can click on pause if you feel like you've received enough inf information and you can return back to it another time and continue from that pause on, right? So use that, use your time, pace yourselves. There is no hurry, there is no rush. And above all, there is no judgment here. This is about producing the translated material in a form that's just available to the English-speaking world. So thank you so much again for your genuine interest and support. I hope that this finds you well. And um, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>